Right, now, our qualifications. Um, if I went to have my brain looked at, or my eyes looked at, I'd want it to be dealt with by a specialist. You know? We're maintaining, Mike and I, and people, we, people have been there and done it and wore the T-shirt, that we are the people to ask to do the business. Right, Mike and I had both been sent to prison in the 60s for malicious wounding and carrying a firearm without a licence. Michael had been in detention centre on two occasions and Rochester Borsal and then finally in Maidstone Prison. I was with him and I was sent to Dover Borsal too. We knew how to break the law, steal cars, rob houses, run from the police, do bodily harm. We were not very nice people. We were convicted criminals, qualified. We weren't angels. When I left Borstal, right, in 1968, I was determined to have a good time and I proceeded to have a three-year career of undetected crime till I got stopped in my tracks by the Lord himself. Also, Michael did not return to prison after home leave. He was on the run from, from the police for a whole year with a changed identity. I felt religion was for city people. And it didn't bother me the way I lived or what I did or the crimes I got involved in. Anyway... One Christian woman I met when I was 15, she warned me and told me that my lifestyle was wrong. And if, if that's enough to put anyone off Christianity, it is. She kept telling me, and I couldn't understand, how can you have a good time in life without getting up to the things I was getting up to? She was a Christian woman from the Brethren background. You know, and they were, they were what you call, I call them, mustn't do us or don't do us. You mustn't do this, you mustn't do that, and it was all wrong. Okay, well, never mind. On the 16th of January, 1970, I had a bad experience myself on LSD. And I cried out to the Lord to help me, to help me. And he heard my cry. And as a result of that night, that night I turned from crime to Christ. I learned to follow Christ as best I could. Now my testimony, you can see it on video number 11, Jamie Clark gives his testimony. It recorded on the 22nd of May, 1972. True account of my life's conversion when I was a very young man. And then I'll tell the story again years later in the newspaper. There it is. Right. Now, when I was converted, I wasn't in any church. Uh, and I went to various churches, learning different things, learning their particular views. So I had to study the scriptures myself to find out the truth. And there's a range, I studied a range of Christian literature and books and educated myself. I finally joined the Beaton Strip in particular Baptists in 1976, went to Wolverhampton Polytechnic, teaching training college, qualified to be a lecturer and taught electronics for, since then, 22 years. I taught at Luton College of Higher Education and Fareham. I was also called by the Lord to preach and I preached in many, in 1982, and preached in many churches throughout, throughout England since 1982. So, I've got a criminal past, I'd turned around, I'd been educated, and now, 30 years later, my brother being converted, he's going to be educated, and we're going to go and help people that have been in crime, to help them turn from crime to Christ. Right, now back to the Redeemer. Alistair and Gordon and I had been to Holland to see the ship, and we envisaged we could bring it to Portsmouth. Alistair had found a place to, to, put, to bring the ship, or to park it, to moor it, and we were looking into it. Right, it was an ideal base to do similar to work what we was doing in New Bidder Prison, but it, this was like a prison that was floating, if you like, but they weren't actually prisoners. Uh, now, we went to Portsmouth University, and we requested the Vice Chancellor if we could make use of their web server to communicate with the Philippines to serve our uh, educational teaching material and uh, examinations and we wanted the university to take on board and to authenticate our we wanted a proper teacher training college with the training and teaching which was in fact equal on a par with English standard university status so that's what we did and it was was, was looked into we also then went to Portsmouth College which was just down the road from where we were going to bring the Redeemer and we asked the principal there could we have our students educated there if they were in residence in the ship and they said yes so it was all on the go it's all coming together so Michael and I were both criminals in the 60s we'd experienced conversion from crime to Christ we knew how to work with criminals and we knew what was needed to help them 
We knew how to live and work with such people. And this was our intention of us bringing the Redeemer as a base to Portsmouth, both before and after Michael's release. Having been a lecturer for 20 years, being a Baptist minister uh, and a Christian for 30 years, and Michael being in business and a manager director of his own company, we were both convicted criminals having been in prison. We believed, we knew how to build a team of workers to do the mission work that we were doing. Now an example of the type of problem and help that we could bring could be, and is shown in, the problem with the youngsters at Stubbington Village. The village where I actually lived, and I've actually got, I had a, a five-year-old daughter living, living there, and I was concerned about her future. Now, it's not an imaginary problem, it was a real problem. Now, the thing was, the local authority, the police, the schools, the newspapers were not actually interested in the problem. Now, you watch the videos, and you tell me whether there's a problem or not, and I'll tell you there is, and I'm going to prove it to you. So what I did is fill out the local authorities, fill out these authorities so-called. I wrote to Prince Charles and I sent him copies of these videos. Videos number 13, which is the first one, Stubbington Village, a problem of drugs. 14, Stubbington Village number 2. 15, Stubbington Village, 10 years on, right? And I informed Prince Charles of the problem of drugs of these youngsters. Now, once you watch them videos, you're now talking the truth, reality. Okay? So... These youngsters were in a prison of a kind, but without bars, okay? Now, they needed help, and Prince Charles wrote back to me, and there's his letter thanking me. The Prince of Wales has says, has asked me to send you all his best wishes for the future success in your work. So there's a commendation from Prince Charles. Local authorities, police, newspapers, no help. Prince Charles does, right? Now, watch video 17. Stubbity village of the Philippines. In the Philippines we discussed a problem. There we are. Now, not everything goes to plan. There are difficulties, there are problems. Okay? The first problem we encountered was about a group of 50 inmates took exception to our work and methods. And they sent back to word to the UK to discredit our work and sought to get us banned from the prison. Martha and I had already identified the nature of the problem that they had and we alerted these men of the problem and I gave an address to the New, the New Village of Prison T Theological Institute telling them that they must keep to scripture and follow the word of God otherwise problems are going to occur. Now that video thankfully was recorded. Video 18. You read it. Watch it. My warning is given. It's almost like a prophetic utterance. Anyway. Now, the other one was this. Michael and I realised what was needed. It was also clear to us that our objectives needed to be reasserted. Reinform the people that were involved in us what our objectives were. Because, although we published our objectives in our book, Treasure Warriors... It, doesn't, it seemed as though nobody ever read what those objectives were, so they didn't know what we were doing. The content of the book was written between Lucas Dungatton and his men, and my, me, for the whole year. Alice had worked with us backwards and forwards. The content of the book was known by those who were involved, but it seemed as though people had lost sight of what we were doing. So it's important. Mark and I, it was important for us to re-establish and reaffirm our objectives. Now, we did this in December 2002, three videos. Video 19, the beginnings, video 20, the vision, and, and 21, the doctrinal basis. Now, those three videos are very important for those that are really interested in working with criminals, working with people that are turning from crime to Christ. They need the foundation. Without the foundation, the house will fail and fall. Christ is the foundation, but the doctrine of Christ is the essential building blocks. The third thing we did after that was to register the ministry in the Philippines uh, for the benefit of other people because it then gave us credibility to go to in all the jails throughout the Philippines. So we registered our ministry with the Security Exchange Commission with, with, in the Philippines and we had authority then and permission to go to all the jails throughout the Philippines. Fourthly, delighted I was, I was appointed 
chaplain by uh, a prison prison missionary. In fact, Monica Karani, the guy we appointed the year previously, had been elevated to and promoted to chief chaplain of this uh, Philippine police uh, organisation. Don't fully understand it, but it's the Values Formation Council. And I was appointed as chaplain by Monica Karani. And there's my letter of appointment. Now, I spoke at the National Philippines Police Association within Newbury Prison, typical one of my sermons, go and listen to it. Video, video 22, the sanctity of marriage, one of the values that we preserve and uphold. Video 23 is Monica Karami, the chief chaplain, speaking to the Philippine National Police. The whole of the police are there in the prison through our work we're doing. Right, back to the problem in Stubbington. I told you I'll convince you and show you the real problem. The first guy that died in Stubberton is Jamie Roberts. In 2003 or something like that, or four, he died of a drug overdose, heroin overdose. Right? That's one of them. Robbie White is another friend I was trying to help. Dried of a heroin overdose. You can't tell me there's no problem. There is a problem, and I warn people, and we are trying to work with it. So I tried to help Robbie White. Tried to help him. His father was a the, the, the police legal drug squad expert in Hampshire and they, they weren't able to help him but we felt we could with our work but they died now my observations and reflections and future plans the thing was we couldn't get the land so we couldn't bring the ship to Portsmouth so we had to think of another method we realized that buildings ships Things like that all cost money and all have accompanying legal problems. So the better idea we concluded is this, to build a team of people who have determination, skills and training to do the task in hand. If they haven't the skills or training, then we'll give it to them. And the education necessary to go about the business of reform, education and rehabilitation of it in another way. To ensure that the team have the same vision like a policy or statement of beliefs relating to actions. Now the steps I've taken, I took these steps when I saw, saw the problems occurring. I published or wrote my diary called Before the Top Cock Crows and published it in the Philippines. And this book was given to all the, the gang leaders in the jail when I left to tell them about the problems because I believe we're going to, going to go back there one day. So I gave my recommendations to, to settle these problems in that book. I've also published, just this recently, my conversion, my story, Converted to Honesty Trip. There it is, £8.99. Uh, it's available for your use. And in that book, I point out the many religious errors that people have today. And it's nonsense half the stuff that goes on. In the UK, what have I done? I've opened... An internet college called the Beard in Particular Baptist, whereby we're going to teach and encourage the necessary, give the necessary learning and recruit people, interested persons, to take part in the work. The purpose is to educate um, people in this work. Now, the thing is this. What do we do? We share our life stories. We do it to interested people. We don't charge. We're free to travel at home and abroad. The sad thing in this is my brother died. He died in the jail. He died of a serious illness, tuberculosis, contracted in the jail. Wasn't able to be helped. There's his coffin, buried in the Longapo City Cemetery. There he is. There's his tombstone, Michael John Clark, died the 27th of 2005, age 58, the first Trojan warrior inmate, new Billy prison. Listen to what he says. He being dead, yet speaketh. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. And there are, the newspaper reported that my brother died, I'm not bitter about his death. Watch the video of Michael speaking from the tomb. It's his last will and testament, video 31. Now, I'm currently writing an account of our mission to the Philippines. 
uh, in which I recall the religious errors and give constructive, positive teaching of what the gospel really actually is. I teach the way of truth, doctrinally correct, as what did Jesus Christ did. And I believe I have been set for def a defence and confirmation of the gospel today. So watch this space. Now, go to our website to view the playlist and watch the listed videos at your leisure. www.trojanhorseinternational.com